the force of the thrust passes straight. Therefore, any cross being indirectly made, the force of a child may put it by. But the force of the blow passes indirectly, therefore must be directly warded in the countercheck of his force, which cannot be done but by the convenient strength of a man and with true cross in true time, or else will not safely defend him, and is therefore much better and more dangerous than the thrust. And again, the thrust being made through the hand, arm, leg, or in many places of the body and face, are not deadly, neither are they maims, or loss of limbs, or life, neither is he much hindered for the time in his fight, as long as the blood is hot. For example, I have known a gentleman hurt in rapier fight in nine or ten places through the body, arms, and legs, and yet has continued in his fight, and afterward has slain the other, and come home, and been cured of all his wounds without maim, and is yet living. But the blow, being strongly made, takes sometimes clean away the hand from the arm, has many times been seen. Again, a full blow upon the head or face with a short, sharp sword is most commonly death. A full blow upon the neck, shoulder, arm, or leg endangers life, cuts off the veins, muscles, and sinews, perishes the bones. These wounds made by the blow in respect of perfect healing are the loss of limbs or maims incurable forever. And yet more for the blow, a full blow upon the head, face, arm, leg, or legs, is death, or party so wounded in the mercy of him that shall so wound him. For what man shall be able long in fight to stand up, either to revenge or to defend himself, having the veins, muscles, sinews of his hand, arm, or leg cut clean asunder? or being dismembered by such a wound upon the face or head, shall be enforced thereby, and through the loss of blood, the other a little dallying with him, to yield himself, or leave his life in his mercy. George Silver, Paradoxes of Defense, Paradox 13. Greetings, fencers of the interwebs. My name is William Kilmer, will or bill to most. My pronouns are he, him, and his. And I fence at Worcester Historical Swordsmanship in Worcester, Massachusetts, in the United States. Do you have a moment to talk about the true fight of George Silver? In the passage read at the beginning of the episode, we hear George Silver discussing the wounds which would be fight-ending uh, that might be inflicted by a short, sharp sword. This is a matter of some interest to contemporary HEMA, as we are now seeing some tournaments where only cuts or thrusts deemed to be fight-ending are scored. Other hits are described as incidental contact and not scored. Now, a couple of years ago, I had the pleasure of participating in Lord Baltimore's Challenge in Maryland, in the single sword category. In this category, and in single rapier, the bout was to the first fight-ending strike. Now, I won one of my bouts with a blow from open fight to the chest of my opponent below the shoulder. As I continued my study of the true fight of George Silver, I kept noticing that such a blow was not on Silver's list of fight-ending strikes. And I began to wonder, and feel a bit guilty, was the omission of a cut to the chest 
deliberate on Silver's part, or was it an inadvertent omission? With the exception of the blow to the shoulder, which, if it was on the sword side, could clearly be incapacitating, Silver lists no blows to the torso among his fight-ending strikes. Yet, uh, in some saber disciplines, we train what is called the bandolier cut, which is uh, precisely that, a cut uh, which, against a right-handed opponent, strikes on uh, the left pectoral and descends diagonally towards the waist on the right, basically ending at the level of the appendix. Would such a strike be fight-ending? Or would it be incidental contact, which, though bloody, the combatant would be able to fight through? And what effect would clothing, uh, which a combatant might be wearing, have on the effectiveness of a cut to the body? I do not think we are going to answer all of these questions today definitively, but inspired by the work of other YouTubers, including Stephen Hand and Paul Wagner, uh, who have worked in this area, I hope we can provide a valid data point for those interested in these matters. The opportunity to do this experimental observation was provided by the fact that my friend Brendan McKenna got some unexpected meat, which he decided he was going to try cutting with his sharp. Brendan Fences at Athena School of Arms in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I suggested that we might test the effectiveness of cuts on clothed meat, meat clothed in different materials and layers of the sort that might have come to the field as a doublet or jacket worn by a combatant. In all cases, the layer next to the saran wrap skin will be linen, representing the combatant's shirt. Over that, we will have a layer of lining, uh, which will in all cases uh, be silk, since our opponent is posh. The top layer of our garment will variously be leather, one thirty seconds of an inch thickness. So, not glove leather, but a thickness suitable for rugged outerwear, then uh, we will also be looking at a sturdy, respectable wool outer layer. Uh, also, uh, we will see what happens with brocade and with velvet. Finally, uh, we shall see what a short, sharp. Finally, we shall see what a short sharp sword may do to a combatant in a linen shirt alone, uh, if we haven't cut our meat to bloody gobbets by that point. My thanks to my wife, Deborah Bach, whose experience as a theatrical costumer and researches into period clothing suggested the materials for this test, also for letting me raid her scrap box and her assistance in assembling the targets. Uh, momentarily, I am going to be leaving for Boston, and we will see what transpires from there. Well, I'm several days back from Boston uh, with video, which Michael has edited down uh, to the relevant bit, uh, eliminating a lot of banter and aimless tramping about in the snow. The sword in the demonstration footage, is a side sword from Kingston Arms, weighing two pounds, eight and a half ounces, uh, with a 31 and 13 sixteenths inch blade, available from Cult of Athena, uh, link in the description below. This will be the cut against the leather coat with a silk lining and a muslin shirt under it. Let's see what we get. Well, we broke the styrofoam. But no damage to the 
Nope. Nothing discernible. Did we do anything to the meat at all? No, nothing. Okay. Yes? Did we actually cut some of the meat? Uh, yes. Okay, did we cut through the leather or did we... Now there I think you may have gone a bit low. Yeah. Now that hit the leather and I think it marked it. But it doesn't appear to have penetrated at all. Yeah, looks like the leather is a pretty darn good. It's, it's a lot of protection. I mean, you would. Did you break any ribs? Uh, looks like it went through between ribs. Okay, was that the cut that missed the target? Yeah. Okay, so. Here is the leather target. Uh, you will see that we have a couple of penetrations here. Uh, but these are from thrusts, which we did when we gave up on trying to cut through the leather. Uh, and even with the thrusts, the leather stopped the point from penetrating to any great depth. Uh, You'll see the thrusts later in the video. Uh, I don't know if you can see better on the back, uh, but none of the cuts came through. All right, did we cut? There is a very small hole. Okay. Uh, well, why don't you try one more cut and then bring the target over and show it to the camera? What do we got? Uh, this was from the first one. Oh, well, it looks like two cuts to me. And that it went, went through, through the, lining, the lining, and it Both went through the, the linen shirt. But only a little bit. It's... All right, sh turn the linen shirt a little more toward the camera. And, okay, so we can actually see. Yeah, there's definitely two cuts that went through there. You can see that more clearly on the linen. All right, why don't we try the next target? We've seen that we would definitely have drawn blood, though probably not an extremely debilitating wound. Well, well, so we're not getting through any of the rib. Right. As you can see how I hit it there, but that's a bit of scarring into the rib. Right, and of course dead bone uh, is more difficult, I am told, to cut through than live bone. Yeah, uh, these would definitely be painful. <laughs> yeah, uh, but not necessarily fight ending. Sure. So why don't we try the next one uh, in the set, which is a lovely brocade. Here is the wool target. Uh, as expected, uh, the wool is less protective than the leather. Uh, of the cuts made, two definitely penetrated. Here, uh, you can see, uh, and came through the linen shirt on the back. There we go. This is a, a single layer of medium weight wool in a fairly loose weave. Uh, winter weight uh, or a denser weave would likely be more protective. Still, only a bloody and possibly painful wound, but not likely fight ending. And see, see how a beautiful brocade jacket or doublet would protect us from our opponent's weapon. Okay, we definitely cut the brocade. Yep. 
I can see it from here, in the lining and through the muslin shirt under, or linen shirt under. Okay, what can we see on the ribs themselves? Uh, not much. Not much. At this point, we gave up on using the vertical target and decided to try striking the clothed meat target while it was lying horizontally on the uh, stand with a good downright blow. Okay, and that definitely came all the way through again. Why don't you bring that over, show it to the camera, and get it, get rid of it, and we'll, and bring the wool over here, because uh, we're, we're going to, yeah, you, you, so uh, from the outside, we've got some fairly distinct cuts in there. Uh-huh. And went through through the first layer of lining. Went through the second layer of lining. Would definitely have drawn blood. Uh, all right. What? And now we have some lovely velvet. Let me look here. Let me get the camera on it. Yeah. Looks like there's some. Some cutting in there, but not a whole lot. And that was a reasonably powerful right. threat. Uh, the brocade appeared to be the least effective uh, barrier to the cut uh, so far, uh, but still did not permit much penetration into the meat. Uh, you can see we cut basically the edge here, uh, and it went through the linen shirt at the back in a couple of places. Uh, once again, a bloody, uh, possibly painful wound, but not likely fight ending as long as the blood is hot. I definitely stopped most of the cut. Looks like Let's take a look at the target and see if we can see anything on it. Do you see any any damage that shows that it went through? Nope. So you may have actually been cutting and knocked it away from the spot that you that you hit. Clearly, it's a lot more difficult to make a cut if you are uh, that, that's effective if you're driving into an opponent that is moving away or winces away as the cut lands. Uh, than one who is stationary or who is closing with you as the cut lands. All right, why don't you see if you can consciously try to make more of a draw and see if you get any better penetration with that. Did it go all the way through the shirt? Okay. Well, definitely through the velvet. Yeah. And, yeah, we've got a definite cut in the lining. And a very... Actually, the velvet is a better piece of protection than we would have anticipated, yeah, I think. better than anything but the, uh, but the leather. Right. That's interesting. The velvet 
was amazingly resistant to uh, being penetrated by a cut, as you saw. We got this tiny little cut here that did go through, uh, but that uh, never really got through the shirt to any significant degree. Uh, we've got maybe three-eighths of an inch. Uh, it, it would be barely a nick in the meat. Uh, I suspect most of us have cut ourselves as badly shaving at one time or another. I wonder if there is enough of that velvet left to make me a jacket. All right, well, would you like to try cutting just the muslin? As though we're going against a shirt alone, because I have several pieces of the muslin here. All right. Surprisingly, not very much of a cut through that either. Okay. You actually got more when you were doing, I think it was the wool? Might have been a slightly different cut. Okay. Yeah, we got through for sure. Yeah, okay. Once again, I don't think on the rib cage that would be a debilitating wound. Now, if you hit the pectoral, maybe more so than if you hit below. muscles of the back and the shoulder and that's what we get with the no with no protection at all we actually went between the ribs and uh, into the styrofoam yes. to a degree well, so styrofoam may have worked. okay That was the styrofoam breaking, I would say, but I'm thinking, you know, without the muslin, you might very well have actually gotten into the lung. Yeah, I mean, this one cut straight through. I made a real effort to uh, draw on that one. Mm hmm That seems to have done something. Sliced almost all the way through. There's right. a little layer of fat still there. Okay. But that was also including the saran wrap that we had as an idea. For as skin-ish stuff. Huh. But there is no hole in the muslin. Well, I'm wondering if the muslin just was dragged into the wound or dragged away off of where you were striking as you pulled the cut through. I didn't, I didn't secure it down. Yeah. Uh. Huh. Yes. So you're reaching the point where you're going to have to be careful that you find all of your ribs because they're beginning to they're beginning to be smaller and smaller pieces. Okay. Well, there's no question that you get penetration to the internal organs with the uh, meat and saran wrap alone. Do you want to try any of the fabric? I think let's, let's try. And silver. Yeah. Totally went through. Totally went through on the thrust. I don't think you're going to get much resistance except possibly from the leather. Well, let's try the leather. Uh, I mean, you, if, it's right at my feet here. Well, it seems to have gone through. Yep. Well, 
pretty unambiguously. Quite thoroughly. Oh. That far in. Okay. Well, that would definitely get along. You will sort of deflect against the glancing glove. Mm-hmm. You want to get your mechanics right. Uh, so here you have seen Brendan cutting into the linen alone, uh, you know, blouse fecton. And the uh, linen alone provided uh, some protection, as you can see. Uh, we've got a couple of cuts here, but uh, he cut several times and only got through a couple of times uh, into, the, into the ribs below. So, uh, you have seen that the sword cut the ribs into tiny little pieces, uh, absent any clothing at all, uh, and though the leather uh, was penetrated with the thrust, uh, probably enough to reach the surface of the lung. Uh, it is doubtful that the point would have reached the heart or any of the major blood vessels deep in the chest cavity. In fact, I'm really sure it would not have going through the leather. So once again, likely not a fight-ending injury, or so it seems to me. Uh, let's see what the panel on the live stream thought of the results as I describe them to the group. Now, the episode that I'm working on right now uh, for the channel, uh, I uh, had a friend who is doing some cutting of meat with a sharp sword, in part inspired by your video, Stephen, uh, and we put clothes on the meat. Uh, and... I can see now why Silver says very little about cuts to the torso. Because if you have, like, ribs, and you put a linen shirt and a silk lining and then almost anything for the outer layer, it's damned hard to actually penetrate. A jacket or a doublet and and a, and a shirt with a cut even mm. if the meat is lying basically on a table and you're trying to cut it it's damned hard to get through all that and if you get through it if you're not perfectly lined up at the gap between the ribs the very there's very little chance that you're going to get into the lung yeah uh, yeah and i mean this is <clears throat> the um the the guys in the heavy brigade at Balaclava were complaining that the Russians were wearing their great coats and were almost <laughs> impossible to wound. Yeah. No. Um, you've got to go for the face or you've got to go for the arm or the leg because you're more likely to get in and be able to penetrate. The, the rib cage is pretty flat and you've you're trying to penetrate it all at once rather than coming in at the edge of the curve and then the sword following through. Uh, and an impact doesn't have, like if, if you get an impact on your head, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that, that hurts. If you get an impact, like, a, like even if it doesn't cut through, the mm -hmm. actual sheer physical impact on your arm will, will do some damage. Right. Yes. And um, yeah, I. And uh, but but you've got a lot of give in your torso. Yes. So the um, having said that, somebody somebody built me in the solar plexus yesterday, and that was fairly unpleasant. 
Um, I said, "Yep, uh, just give me a moment. I'll be, I'll be back." But yep. Um, from a from a practical benefit, though, William, the um, the nice thing about what you've discovered is that we get to practice HEMA wearing just padded jackets, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to have sort of steel plates protecting us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting, as you look at the target list that Silver gives you, uh, and s saying, you know, you're going to wound this, 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 or this, and the torso is nowhere in the list. Uh, it's the neck, it's the shoulder, it's the arm, it's the face and the head, and the leg are the, are the targets that he lists. And I said, well, did he omit this by accident? No, he omitted it because there's a very good reason. You're not going to cut very effectively in a way that's going to be a fight ender if you hit into the torso. And that's uh, the thing, fight ender. It, the fight ender is the critical. Yeah. Or at least something that's, something that's going to prevent them from still swinging their sword at you. Yeah. Um, it's also a difficult target to hit safely, which goes back to what we were saying earlier about the the Why like the hands to hit safely. If if you can, if someone can't use their hands, they can't use the sword. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, well, of course, I fence a lot of people who do Angelo Taylor Roworth style broadsword, right? That's the most common system around here for a military weight broadsword is they do Angelo Taylor Roworth. Those people will go over into Sabre 5 like this if I, got a, if I get an effective head feint, right? Yeah. So the sword's way up here. I can very often cut them in the short ribs and get out safely in a tournament situation because they're doing this and it's not true garden where they've got the blade down where it is in any effective place to do a to do a parry if i've come in low on the ribs uh but <laughs> i'm beginning to feel guilty about those points because i realize now there's very little chance if they were wearing even a shirt that I would actually cut them. <laughs> well, oh, that's, in the arm. that's sport for you. So. <laughs>
uh, twice dislocated my thumb. Uh, I've also suffered a fairly sizable second-degree burn. Some of these were exquisitely painful. None of them sent me into shock. However, one night, I was hurrying to bed through the darkened kitchen and found the open door of the dishwasher with my shin. That sent me into shock. Once recovered on examination, there wasn't even a bruise. I have no idea how we account for that in HEMA scoring. Finally, I would like to acquit Mr. Silver of sexism in his assertion that warding the blow requires the convenient strength of a man. I am sure he simply had not had the benefit of my experience fencing a variety of persons at broadsword and longsword. You know who you are. So, that wraps it up uh, for this time. If you found this interesting, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you on the flip side. This is that interesting at all? Yeah. Oh, oh, penetration tests on the patches. Yes. What do you think of that? Hmm? Yes. Well, there. That was. This is the usual disclaimer. As most of you know, I have been studying the true fight of George Silver for about three and a half years now. I am not an expert. I'm just a student trying to share the resources that I have found helpful and the conclusions that I have reached so far. I rely heavily upon the expertise of those who have gone before, and I intend to credit their works and opinions whenever I reference them. If I have failed to do so, or you feel that I have misrepresented or misattributed your views or failed to state that a certain erroneous view is entirely my own, please let me know in the comments or privately, and I will endeavor to make corrections and amends in a subsequent video. All errors are, of course, entirely my own. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the flip side. Thank <laughs> you.